Hello everybody, it's Sydney Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Object 268 version 4. A tier 10 Russian tank destroyer that recently had a buff to the lower plate, increasing it from 260 to 300. So, 268 version 4, I've had this tank in my garage for a very long time, and honestly, it, it just felt kind of like a meh kind of tank, I guess you can say. Like, whenever I first got it, I had a lot of fun. I had a couple of matches that this thing was just phenomenal, but it didn't really feel like a keeper to keep, you know, just keep on using. And I got it after it got the debuff on that lower plate and uh, before it got any buffs whatsoever. So starting off, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, base statistics and everything else that you guys have that probably you can use in this tank and see how you can make it effective. So it's starting off 2,000 hit points. It's a chunky boy. It's it's not like you had this little bit of hit points. It's got a really decent amount. Along with that, 650 alpha on a 152 caliber gun. So, you know, it's we'll, we'll find some mid-maxing there, really. Primarily, the reload is where this tank is going to be benefiting the most. Up next, 293, 360, and 90 millimeters of penetration across the board. So, standard pin, 293 AP rounds, so it's going to be working out really well. Um, if you find yourself loading in the premium, you're mostly going to be against haul down tanks or loading in the high explosives against side scraping tanks or haul down tanks. Honestly, your choice, whether you're free to play or pay to win. Top speed of 40, not exactly the greatest. I would like to see this thing get the speed that it has over on PC, which I believe is in the range of 50 with a really, really absolutely crazy amount of power to weight. Next up, we have view range at 370. You're going to be finding this lacking a lot. Taking coded optics could be a viable choice, but for me, um, with the lack of speed that we have on console, I actually prefer using the power terrain. Up next, concealment. It has enough concealment to stay hidden behind a bush as long as you're not firing off your gun. But if you have muffled shot, concealment, camouflage, and all those nice little juicy perks, it's going to be helping out this thing quite a bit. All right, so 3.47 rounds a minute. Not looking too good already on that rate of fire, but I'm telling you guys now, it's actually really freaking nasty. Uh, I just, since they buffed this tank, it is a blast to play. And I've been having a lot of fun. No one really knows how to go against it. And I find that people are loading heat against me more often than not. 17.3 base reload. You are able to get this down to, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, or just wait for the replay. 12.8 seconds for 650 alpha, which means that you're going to be matching most heavy tanks and potentially even out trading them, which makes a massive difference on the field. Now, ammo capacity, we have 30 rounds, aim time 2.5, accuracy 0.42, close quarters, brawler. This is what this tank is meant to be. Get in close and get dirty and hunker down. Uh, but yes, absolutely fantastic. No problems here. 5 degrees of gun depression, 15 degrees of elevation. Depression, you're not going to be finding this thing working a ridge line really well. It does have a little bit of a low profile, which does give it a tad bit of an advantage. But even then, you have this massive commander satch that you got to be watching out for. 26 degrees of hull traverse, or is that the, uh, that is the brain fart. That is the brain fart. Okay, we have V4. We have V4. What is going? Okay, traverse speed. Traverse speed. V okay, this has got to be turret. Why? Okay, turret rotation. We don't have a turret. 26 degrees. Okay, up next, I'm done looking at this, you guys. My brain hurts so far. It's been a minute since I've done this, and their website is acting up on me. I give up. Horsepower, 850, 11.33 horsepower a ton. And right there is the reason why I prefer using a power terrain on this tank, just because getting your averages up with power terrain, it's going to be a lot better than a traction system, especially on those lower power to weights. Getting your average speed up, is what your goal is. You want to try and get that average higher. That way you're not getting stuck in the background and just finding yourself hitting a wall. I, I guess is the, the best way to put that. But fire chance, 12%, totally okay. Reverse speed, 18, absolutely phenomenal on that reverse speed. Top speed of 40, you're not going to be hitting it too often with that 11.33 power to weight. But traverse speed on the tracks, we're looking at 22 degrees, 
terrain resistance, I would actually recommend off-road driving on this tank and possibly even clutch braking. So up next, let's take a look at the armor here. This is against its own gun with 293 penetration. And as we can see, there's a lot of auto ricochet combined with lower plate 85 millimeters, 300 millimeters, 100, 260, 220 for the other side, just 220. And then up in the hatch, we have 230. So one way to play the object 268 v4 we're just going to go version 4 is to take your gun and put it in the way of that hatch so if you play the tank enough you're going to get an idea where you need to place that gun against the opponents you're going against doing this is going to make it to where this hatch now has an additional 140 millimeters of armor of spaced armor which the gun 70 millimeters that's only one side of the barrel it's got to go through it twice to be able to go through the gun so you double the number Heat rounds going through it as well. Heat rounds lose 5% of the penetration per 10 millimeters that they go through. So, yeah, good luck getting heat through there as well. But, you know, if you want to really make someone angry, just load in the HE, hit the gun, break the gun, splash the top of the tank, and just make them upset. If you have a big enough gun, that is. But, primarily, 80 millimeters of side armor up in the very side. We got 100, the exact rear. We got 45, 20 down low. Primarily, though, this tank, it can achieve some auto ricochet angles on its rear against 120s. But, you know, like, who's who's going in the in the battle in reverse? I don't know. There's some days I feel like I might, but please don't. That just doesn't seem like that good of an idea at all. But, yeah, today, today's one of those days, guys. It's been a few weeks since I've recorded anything, and I've just been recording matches, getting replays up and slacking off as much as I can. Now, we're gonna jump into the crew, the equipment, everything else that I'm running, but keep in mind, I only have a view range of 392.2. That does not include the premium consumable that I have. So, up first, we're gonna be looking at Canis. I absolutely hate this map. Uh, like, not, not really. It's just, each time I end up on it, I find myself getting caught out and making mistakes, quite, quite a few of them. It, it can be fun, or it can be not be fun. Most of the time, it's not fun. <coughs> Otherwise, issues. But, you know, it's a tier 10. Of course, you're going to be top tier every single game. So I guess there's a benefit. Artillery still hits like a freight train, which honestly hasn't changed in like five years. And I would say I'm extremely excited about seeing Artillery finally getting a debuff, because they need it it's not fun whenever i pull a corner inside of a slow super heavy and get hit for a thousand it's still happening guys it's still happening by the way spotlighter does not work still doesn't work i tested it still broken i'm so sad but canis this is one of those maps so you know there's a couple really good positions to go to but me i don't want to get caught out in a fight that I can't win. So I want to get somewhere where I'm going to get side shots and just use my armor to my advantage. Now, the armor in the 268, your top plate at 100 millimeters, if you're not maxing out that gun depression or you're not using, let's say, one degree of gun depression, they can get standard rounds through that top plate. And pretty much no matter what angle you are located in against basically any tier 10 loading heat rounds they can effectively go through your top armor without much of an issue loading in that heat now the second that you max out your gun depression against 340 millimeters of heat your effective armor is 480 to 450 millimeters on that top plate which does give you an upper hand advantage and right here with p44 pantera finding that 85 millimeter lower plate and punishing us for trying to push over rather than backing up. In that situation, I would have been better backing up, trying to get to a better spot to get the, I guess you could say, depression on him, rather than pushing up the way I did, which sacrificed quite the amount of hit points. But at the same time, right here, we're using our gun to cover our hatch, and the Sudoka T50 did not want to play around with us because, well, we suddenly became extremely hard to penetrate. 
And how often do you want to sit there and just think to yourself, Ooh, I want to pull in front of a 650 Alpha gun. But so far up to 1720 blocked, 2500 dealt, and there we go, putting another 683 damage into the side of the P44 Pantera. This gun hits hard. It's got a really good reload combined with that. Honestly, 26A version 4, if you guys have it, or if you're working your way up to it, or if you haven't really considered this tank, I would say consider it. Check it out. Take a look at it. Honestly, seeing more of these in the matchmaking would make me happy, and seeing less of the V5s would make me happy. Still, the buff on the V5 is still there, so kind of just waiting for them to see that doing that made it comparable to most super heavies and it's now outperforming some heavy tanks in a lot of situations same thing about the e4 it's outperforming a lot of heavy tanks in a lot of situations and it's just wrong to the fact that we have the super heavies that are able to pull up and get outmatched by tank destroyers all the time that shot right there against the um, Andre the Giant. If you guys want to go back and check it out, let me know your opinion on that shot. Honestly, myself, looking at the way that I was angled compared to that situation, I don't see how he could have gone through even with 300 millimeters of AP pen. But he has, what is it, 250 standard and a 280 premium? Not 100% of what Andre the Giant has. I played the tank a long time ago, but wasn't really too impressed with the tank in my opinion that tank felt like an extreme pay to win because they just dropped an amx into the game tier 10 and gave it this tremendous amount of armor uh, just ridiculous well 268 version 4 5759 damage dealt 1950 blocked good game right there 5700 to be honest i'm averaging in the range of I'd say 4,000 to 5,000 a match. And surprisingly enough, getting consistent 6Ks popping up maybe once every single 10 or so matches. So the tank is standing up extremely well. All right. I'm, I'm done. We're, we're done. Here we go. My opinion of the 268 version 4. My absolute opinion with the 30 or so matches I've played inside this tank since I bought it years ago. This is one of those tanks that I bought back in the day waiting for the buff because I, I've seen the buffs that they do over on PC and occasionally we get those buffs dropped on console. We get reworks dropped on console. Same thing about Type 5. Type 5, we got the buff on the Type 5. However, the buff was too much. I'll jump into that on a later date just because I don't need to cover it right away. But 268 version 4, it suffers from V range. This was one of those tanks that I would actually take binoculars on and having binoculars on it gave me a lot better matches and just I was able to actually sit back and camp out a little bit. But back in the day, I was playing the tank wrong. And now that I know that I was playing the tank wrong and with the most recent update to the game, basically our version of Equipment 2.0, which in my opinion was kind of just a ripoff of 2.0, because we have to stack all this extra equipment just to get the same effects that PC have with one piece. Kind of took away from the value of it in my opinion. But 268 version 4, this tank, it, it's kind of a 50-50 for me whether I like it or I hate it. I enjoy the fact that I have this really heavy armor in the front with a big fat gun that's absolutely devastating if someone pulls out in front of me. And if they want to sit out in front of me, if I start bouncing, I'm going to load 360 millimeters of heat pen, and I'm going to make you hate me during the time that you decide to sit out in front of me. Now, the 30 rounds of ammunition that this tank gets, um, there are moments I kind of feel like it's not enough, but at the same time, it's still quite the amount of ammunition just because you have 650 alpha, and if we add more even more than likely you'd see players sitting in the background of this tank rather than pushing up forward trying to get the damage. Me, I like to try and take a mixed variety of ammunition, a healthy amount of premium. 10 rounds in my opinion right now with the what I was loading inside this tank. I was looking at my average round fired per round, which about 14. 
So I decided to say, hey, let's do 14 standards. And if the 14 standards aren't going to be working out, then we're going to swap over to, you know, maybe dropping a couple standard rounds and loading in a couple more premiums or maybe even a more couple HE rounds. Now, covering the hatch and learning that, it, it took me a second to get it down, but I feel like I have it down a little bit comfortably. I do the same thing in my E5. I do the same thing in the E4, E3. A lot of tanks have got big cupolas, big hatches. It's really nice to know that you can block it with your gun and just gives you some of the extra comfort. Now, the 268 version 4, if you do angle this tank just right, you can make that hatch extremely thick, up to 260 millimeters thick up in the front. If you're getting gun depression, you're looking at about 230. So it's staying about at the 230 mark, but it makes a lot of the hatch a little bit thicker up near the top section, but down lower, it still stays at the 230 because it's balled out. The view range on this tank, with them removing a lot of equipment from the game, I do find they took away from a lot of advantages that this tank could have had, because there's a lot of moments that I just come to a stop, and I'd rather wait for my Binox to go up for a few seconds, and then slam the gas to be able to go again. T-54 mod coming up to chase me down, and a light tank getting ready to circle. Uh-oh, T-92 and T-54 mod, T-54. Lucky for me, I have artillery backing me up and a heavy tank off in the distance. If you angle this tank right with the rear, it's got spaced armor on the sides, 30 millimeters of it, right underneath the tracks, which will absorb a lot of damage if no one is paying attention or they're just RB auto-locking you. Sadly for these light tanks, they're RB auto-locking and not moving around too much. Sadly for me, I kind of just wasted a round right there against the T-92 Falcon because artillery decided to hit the target and honestly thank you but you could have saved it <laughs> 18 reverse speed in this tank if i needed to i could have backed up got out of the situation did something different loading an he around here kind of no we're not we're gonna get a splash for 377 not a penetration if that was a penetration that would have been extremely dirty and he would be very sad but a 10 to 8 situation right now it's Looking to be a decent game, so far the 2,317 dealt, and actually getting assist damage at 1,781. Artillery is giving me a really good chunky amount of assist, along with the heavy tank off to the left. But, with only 392 view range, I'm really limited on what I'm able to do. But, I can still push up. Now, along with covering a lot of things, the top plate on this tank on the front deck is 55 millimeters. So you have the 100, and then it goes 55. What's so nice about 55, it's going to auto-ricochet everything, except for a Death Star and a Jagdpanzer E... Ooh, snap. Jagdpanzer E100. Um, I believe the Jagdpanzer E100 can rip right through and overmatch. Yes, it can. 55 will defend against 165 millimeters and lower. So, Jaggers can overmatch it, Death Stars can overmatch it, but anything smaller than that, they are going to be bouncing, auto ricocheting consistently. Now, you can use this to your advantage, you can back up a little bit onto a hill if someone's firing standards at you, and you can basically bait them into shooting your top plate with standard rounds, unless they're loading heat. If they're loading heat rounds, more than likely, they're going to go right through that, because it's only 164 millimeters of defense against heat rounds. Right here, being able to show off the way the armor's working. 268 pushing up. And here we go, taking the time to lead the shot and get it placed. 268 version 5, we get penetrated in the lower plate because they don't know how to go against this thing, so they load the heat rounds. 268 version 5, the armor buff in the tank, a bit obsessive, and just a little bit too much in my opinion. Maybe a little bit more than a little bit. But it is what it is. We have to put up with it because it's wargaming. They're going to realize their mistakes here in a couple of weeks, maybe even months. But it, it is what it is. There's only really so much we, we can do. And kind of the entire reason why I've slowed down quite a bit. But other than that, monstrous game. Only a first class mastery badge. 3,946 assisted. Along with that, we're looking at 3,941 dealt. Really close numbers, almost 8,000 combined, just barely short of 8,000 combined. Absolutely a fantastic match.
and in my opinion extremely well played uh yuki toto i'm very sorry you guys got focused out right off the bat but other than that click the wrong button i gotta get the cam up there okay 268 version 4 equipment wise i've been looking over a couple of things in this tank and to be honest power terrain i love using the power terrain in this tank i have tried separate builds with the advanced loader swapping out for the advanced repair system um i'm doing some testing with advanced suspension so far it does not feel like it's working the way it's intended to work <clears throat> um my is7 has been getting tracked by 120s in the tracks with a single round from full health to nothing and i don't think track durability is working um, other than that, I'm going to be checking it out later here in a couple of weeks, over the next couple of weeks with a couple of other guys to see if there really is a difference with the advanced suspension or not. And I'll let you guys know whenever I get that done. But tell then, if you're looking to make a fast, aggressive build inside your 26A version 4, drop the advanced loader, use the advanced power terrain, and the advanced repair system. And if you want to risk it for the biscuit... It enhanced target info the one thing i recommend to never remove from your tank ever ever never never take this thing off but if you feel like you need to advanced optics to give you that extra little bit now taking a look at the crew this is my russian crew this thing actually never changes it has been set up the same way for ever until they fixed gunsmith, then I had to redo it. But born leader, rapid loading, run and gun, steady aim, snapshot, situational awareness, sixth sense, track mechanic, clutch braking. Now, with crew testing and everything else, I've actually, I have a couple of dummy crews that I've been testing out. And I'm working on a new crew with Becky Lynch. You guys can judge me later. Tell Yuki if he got me or I would max her out keep in mind i've only had her for 10 days she's got seven perks i've also haven't been playing as much either so yeah she's she's up there oh man watch me look back at this in like a month oh she's maxed out now mm. but yeah honestly um there's a couple things that i wanted to ask you guys individually uh, one of them being, would you like to see me go over equipment, builds, heavy tanks, super heavies, just ways to, to mid-max and help try to get, I guess you can say, better outcomes with your tanks. Keep in mind, I do a lot of build testing and I screw around with a lot of stuff. It's the reason why I can never break 10k, 10, 10, 10, yeah, I'm done with that, 10k on my gold anymore. Just because I'm consistently tearing apart tanks, rebuilding, putting them together. And also always silver broke. Um, the only reason why I have 6 million right now is because I just barely hit stage 75 in the season pass. And I got the general T27. Which, great tank. If you guys haven't played it yet, go nuts with that thing. Uh, keep in mind, your ammo rack is the entire freaking side of the tank. And if someone's RB auto locking or R R1, is that right? I think that's right. R1 auto locking you. You probably will get your top popped. But other than that, it's a good tank. Um... I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to hit a wall now, and I'm just going to say, 268 version 4, if you're looking to grind this thing out, it's definitely worth the grind. The tier 9, which the T54-122 did recently get a buff, so once you hit that tier 9 grind, um, honestly, don't speed through it. Relax, enjoy the grind. I always say that. I, I try to enjoy grinds as much as I can. Most of the time, if I have experience boosters, which honestly, I have a crap load of experience boosters, don't ask why. I have so many. Oh, look, free XP, the most useless thing to boost. But, yeah, I got a pretty decent chunk of these. And whenever I do grind out a line, I, I usually like to use boosters just to be able to get up to the fully upgraded version right then and there, or within under, I'd say, 40 or so matches. And then to play the tank regularly with the previous setup without any boosters until I get the next tank, just because I like to use them and not use them so till next time it was nice having you guys here and seriously let me know down in the comment section if you would like to see me go over equipment and perk loadouts probably going to use seven different tanks as examples for these builds that can give you an idea for terrain resistance ramming speed capability and whatever but till then you guys have a great time and see you on the battlefield